What if your own brain could shut off at any moment, leaving you with no control over your actions? That's what seems to be happening to one young woman following a horrible car accident. However, the source of her blackouts is actually something much darker. And if she can't find a way to stop it, neither she nor her friends will be safe from the evil attempting to claw itself free from the dark pits of her shattered mind. The story begins at a seedy motel where a nameless young woman gives herself to countless men. She feels nothing and the money isn't great, but it seems harmless enough until a mysterious man pulls up and barges in, taking her by force and leaving without pay. Months later, she finds herself with child. Unwilling to carry this monster's baby, she uses a pair of scissors to terminate the pregnancy. By the time the housekeeper finds her, she has almost no life left in her, except one. 23 years later, her surviving child Helen works as a bike messenger. She delivers a package to her admirer Roman, who's painted a portrait of Helen for her birthday. He tries to kiss her, but she isn't interested. As she takes the painting and leaves, he tells her to come back when she figures out what she wants. He'll soon wish she'd stayed far away. Helen later drinks with her best friend Molly at the motel. Molly thinks it's weird that Helen likes to spend time at the site of her mother's passing, but as Helen returns a necklace she stole from Molly, when they were 11, she explains she's always been jealous of Molly for having a home and family. All Helen has is this motel. Molly gets a text from Ed, the director of a play she's starring in, and has to go. As Helen prepares to leave on her bike, a light turns on in her mother's old room and distracts her. She backs into the parking lot where she's hit by a car. At the hospital, Dr. Headley tells Molly that Helen sustained a major head injury, which may have long-lasting effects. But when Helen wakes up, Molly tells her she'll be back to normal in a couple of weeks. Molly celebrates Helen's return home with a huge party, which Helen spends in her room making sketches. After Molly checks on her and tells her to join the celebration, Helen drifts through the party until she meets Ed. She finds him thoroughly unimpressive as he comments on her looks, offers her a bump of powder, and obnoxiously quotes Greek tragedies like he thinks he wrote it himself. She starts to loosen up as she dances with Molly, but this ends quickly when she suffers a nightmarish series of visions and wakes up riding her bicycle toward a moving car. Narrowly avoiding another accident, she calls Molly and learns that she left the morning after the party and hasn't been heard from since. That night, Helen starts hearing voices and finds herself sketching disturbing images. After scratching an itch under her cast, she decides to hide the painting in her closet. Of everything that's just happened, she'll be shocked to learn the itch beneath her cast was actually the greater concern. Helen hits the gym and showers in the locker room. After Molly calls to tell her she'll be having friends over after dress rehearsal that night, Helen notices a slight rash coming out of her cast. She washes her face, then looks up and sees someone in the shower. Helen slowly approaches and sees what looks like her own face before pulling back the curtain to reveal nothing. Another vision-filled blackout appears to show Roman in danger. Helen wakes as she drops her towel in front of Molly's friends. She flees the room, leaving bloody fingerprints behind as she closes herself in the bathroom. Molly follows and asks what happened, but Helen doesn't remember. Ed, meanwhile, respects Helen for giving everyone an eyeful. After Molly leaves, Ed lingers until Helen closes the door on him. She cries as she removes a large shard of glass from her foot. Helen later describes her blackout to Dr. Headley, including the voices and hallucinations. Headley tells her they'll need an MRI. Afterward, Helen takes a cab to the motel and steals a key from the house housekeeping cart. She enters her mother's old room and looks under the bed where she sees a vision of herself before blacking out. As she wakes to a call from Dr. Headley, she sees the letter I written on the mirror. This is just the first of many cryptic messages to come. Helen's MRI shows an undeveloped spine, a sign of vanishing twin syndrome. It's revealed that Helen had a sister who perished by her mother's hand. Rather than being miscarried, the baby was absorbed into Helen's body. Helen's accident caused the mass to start growing, and it's now putting pressure on her brain. Helen needs time to think about whether to have it removed. But when Headley leaves the room, Helen uses her stethoscope to hear a voice speaking from within her skull and decides she wants the surgery immediately. Helen later tells Molly that she's scheduled for surgery in three days. 
Helen feels guilty for surviving when her sister didn't, but Molly cheers her up by giving her back the necklace and taking a picture of them together. She then leaves for rehearsal telling Helen to get some rest. When she returns home, Helen finds that the painting has been removed from the closet. Angry and frightened, she rips the painting from its frame and goes to Roman's to return it. She finds an open laptop playing a video of herself tying Roman to his bed. She then finds a broken mirror, the source of the glass in her foot. She takes the laptop and rides to an alleyway where she smashes the computer and throws it in a dumpster. She soon begins retching and pulls a long strand of black hair from her throat. When she returns home to the shower, she notices the rash has gotten larger. When she touches it, she sees Roman's body with a partial message carved into it. Is this real? If so, who will be her next victim? Helen wakes to find herself putting on lipstick and sees the full message on the mirror. I am coming. She finds the painting back in her room and throws it in the dumpster outside before using a belt to tie herself to the bed. She begins to wonder if she can hold it together for three whole days. After more disturbing visions, this time involving Ed, she wakes to find her hands freed and her feet bloody. A box cutter sits beside her and the painting has again returned. Molly comes to the door and tells Helen her play starts in an hour. Helen gets dressed for the show, taking the motel key and box cutter as she leaves. On her way to the theater, she starts to have memories of sleeping with Ed as she suffers more pain from her rash. She ducks into a small room under the theater and begins tearing at her cast, beating it against the wall until it breaks apart. She pulls it off to reveal that her entire arm is infected. After painfully tearing out her stitches, she reaches inside and pulls out a fully formed formed finger. This is but a small glimpse at the true scale of what's growing inside her. Helen washes her hands and tears off a piece of her dress to bandage her arm. As she leaves, Ed spots her and follows, declaring his love for her. He reveals that they slept together in her mother's motel room and that she said it was her first time. Helen leads him on and convinces him to take off his pants, then threatens to cut off his boyhood with the box cutter. When she realizes realizes what she's doing, she drops the box cutter and walks away. She runs straight into a vision of her twin who enjoyed her first time and wants more. Helen returns home and blocks her door with a chair, then ties her socks around her feet and again binds her hands to the bed because it worked so well the first time. Although she dreams of running down the street, she wakes to find all of her safety measures still in place. But things are still not well. Not only is Molly upset that Helen missed her show, but she found a number of disturbing sketches in Helen's room. Ed's now missing, and Molly thinks Helen has something to do with it. She threatens to call the police. As they argue, Helen blacks out multiple times until she finds herself attacking Molly. She backs away and tells Molly to run before shutting herself in her room. As she tries to tie herself to the bed, Molly breaks in and Helen begins choking her. Helen again regains control and retreats downstairs where a car follows her into an alley. Ed gets out, pulling the box cutter and giving chase. She retreats into the subway and hides behind a pillar, but Ed finds her quickly and drops the box cutter before trying to force himself on her. She breaks away and falls to the ground, but her body begins shifting. When she turns around, her eyes have changed. She charges him, picking up the box cutter and stabbing him repeatedly. She then writes a message on the platform and collapses by the pillar. Helen wakes to find the blood on her hand and the final message from her twin, I am here. But Helen will soon learn that her sister's true birth is yet to come. Helen retreats upon seeing Ed's body and runs upstairs to take his car. Molly, meanwhile, looks through pictures she's taken with Helen and notices the difference in her eyes. Searching Ed's car, Helen finds his phone and calls Molly. Now realizing that Helen truly isn't in control of her actions, Molly begs her to come home and get help. But Helen believes she was meant to pay perish with her sister in the motel room and intends to set things right. Molly takes Helen's bike and runs downstairs as Helen drives to the motel. She attempts to drown her twin in pills and vodka, but the beginnings of another physical change tell her that this won't be enough. She stumbles out of bed to the bathroom where she breaks the mirror and uses the glass to cut her wrist, but she can still hear her sister's voice. Will Molly arrive in time to save Helen from her other half? Helen tells her sister in the mirror that it's 
time for things to end, but her twin faces her in person and says that it's her turn to live. When Molly arrives at the motel, she hears Helen screaming and finds her cowering inside. Helen tells Molly to run, but Molly finds the pills on the bed and refuses to leave her best friend. Helen tells Molly that she loves her just before her sister takes over for the last time, tearing away Helen's skin bit by bit and finally revealing herself in the flesh. Molly is paralyzed with fear until the twin emerges from behind the bed. Molly retreats to the bathroom and escapes through the window. She heads for Ed's car when Helen's sister sees her and begins crawling her way. Unable to find the car keys, Molly looks around and sees no sign of the twin. She cautiously opens the car door and steps out, but the twin appears behind her. Molly runs back into the motel and grabs a shard of glass. She tries the window again, but the twin grabs her and begins choking her. Reaching for the glass, Molly stabs the twin before quietly apologizing and cutting her throat. The twin falls back and stops moving. Molly looks her over for signs of life, but she's gone and she's taken Helen with her. Finding her necklace on the bathroom floor, Molly begins crying at the loss of her friend. At break of day, Molly exits the motel, looking back as she stumbles toward the bike. She clumsily picks it up and leaves behind both the birthplace and final resting site of the evil that took her best friend. Click the videos on screen right now.